hello guys welcome once more to our chief channel so today before we dive into what we're going to be doing top right of your screen you can see a vision we have for youtube and what we're trying to accomplish and then at the bottom right of your screen you can look at our contacts you want to reach out to any one of us um for any reason the world just reach down there and reach out <music> Hello guys, so today we are going to be looking at a problem in the Knowledge Center Physics March Mock 2022. Question number one, A says the height of a horse sometimes given a unit of hands. Explain why it is a poor measurement of length. B says show that the equation that is homogeneous where C is speed per unit square of length for waves propagated along a wire with tension T, length L and linear density mu. Given that the period of oscillation of a gas bubble from an explosion underwater depends upon P, B, and E, where P is static pressure, D is the density of water, and E is the total energy of explosion, find dimensional relation relation for t d explain whether the correctness of physical equation is a necessary condition for its homogeneity all right guys so let's dive right into the solution and uh, we discussed the height of a horse is sometimes given a unit of hands explain why this is a poor measurement of length now when you're dealing with units you particularly want to talk about the precision of your measurement or the measuring device you're using to get your measurement and the accuracy of your measured value so the accuracy fundamentally is just the number of significant figures that are present in your measured value and the precision of your measuring device is simply the least interval measurement that particular measuring device can read. Now, if you are talking about the hand, it's a poor unit of measurement because simply because it's imprecise, really. My hand is different from your hand, it's different from your mother's hand, so we cannot talk about a definite least interval measurement. All right, so we move on to the next part of the problem, which is B. Now, if we want to discuss the homogeneity of this equation, the trick here was, well, what we want to do with this question is that we want to break stereotypes with students. So you're used to seeing C just as the speed of light. Now, in this question, we are calling C as a speed per unit square of length, right? So you have to realize there that C is not, the base unit of C is no longer just meters per second, but then it's meters per second per meter square, right? So the base unit of C here, because once we investigate that this equation is homogeneous, so once we investigate that every term in this particular expression has the same unit base unit basically so you realize that if we get the base unit of c here it's just meters per second per meter squared which is per meter per second and then we head over to getting the base unit of the right hand side which is just um so the square root of the base unit of t now the base unit of t here remember that t is the tension so it's just the force which is mass times acceleration kilogram meters per second squared the mu here is linear density again that's a trick Linear density is not the same as density. Density, normal density is mass per unit volume. Linear density is mass per unit length. So you have that density there, the base unit as kilogram per meter. Then over here as L to the power four, we would of course have meters to the power four. Now I want to simplify that and then take square root, we have per meter per second. So you realize that the base unit of the left hand side is close to the base unit of the right hand side, hence the equation is homogeneous. Alright, so let's head over to the next part of the problem, which is that given that the period of oscillation of a gas bubble from an explosion of that water depends upon P, D, and E, where P is the static pressure, D is the density of water, and E is the total energy of explosion, find dimensional relation for T. Now, let's rule our line here and dive into the solution. Now, this is a problem that closely resembles a problem I gave to students back in 2020 when I taught in BGS um, summer holidays. And then I also gave the same problem to students back in 2021. Now, but it was just, you know, uh, a problem that resembles this one, not exactly. So I'll just display that problem here. So this, this is how I gave that problem. I told them that, okay, so if T, which is the period of oscillation of a pendulum bob, is, is equal to C, K raised to the power X, M raised to the power Y, determine the the values of x and y and then go ahead and suggest a value for c that question i give them for six marks mm -hmm. so again you are going to be using the same principles i'm going to be using to solve this particular problem to be able to deduce this the result of this 
other problem here so i'm going, just going to solve this one and then in the comment section down below you can leave me your value if you can solve this problem if you can use what i'm going to use here to solve this one and solve this one please in the comment section below just leave what your value of c is and what your values of x and y ah well again if you understand um simple harmonic motion very well yes this shouldn't be very much of a problem so let's go to the problem here now if t which is the period of oscillation depends upon p d and e we want to write that like that it's just a relation so we write it like that with respect to their various powers now these powers are just those various things that the small things that fix this equation so that it's become it becomes homogeneous now of course we want to introduce a equality sign and then introduce a constant proportionality which in this case is a dimensionless constant proportionality so that k there is just to make the equation correct so just because with the p raised to the power x z raised to the power y e raised to the power z the equation is already homogeneous i'm just putting in the k that k there because you know that homogeneity is not a sufficient condition for the correctness of a particular physical equation so we want to move over and say that the base unit of t because again if this equation is homogeneous then you realize that the base unit of the left hand side equals the base unit of the right hand side so let's evaluate a problem with respect to their base unit so the base unit of t here is just the second i want to raise that to the power one the base unit of k here is a dimensionless constant so you forget about that guy the unit is just one the base unit of p here which is static pressure it's pressure so it's kilogram per meter per second squared raised to the power x base unit of d here which is density is kilogram per meter cube which all that raised to the power y and then e here is just kilogram meter squared per second squared which is the base unit of energy or that raised to the power z so we want to simplify and then apply uh, indices so if I simplify this, the kilogram, for instance, raised to the power x, the met per meter raised to the power x, per second squared raised to the power x, and then you add all those terms. Basically, since they are multiplied, you just add their powers. Now, our um, left-hand side here says that we have second raised to the power 1. On the right-hand side, if it's homogeneous, this second two has to be to the power 1. So you simply take this power here, you equate it to the power here. So you rearrange that equation, you have our equation 1 coming out, 2x plus 2y plus 1 equals 0. And then you come over to the kilogram here. Since there's no kilogram on the left-hand side, so the, the, the power of kilogram here, x plus y plus z, must be 0. So we have that for our equation 2. Then the, again, there's no matter on the left-hand side. So on the right-hand side, the whole of this power for the matter is just 0. So um, that's our equation 3 if we rearrange. Then now we have three a system of three equations let's just rule like this and continue over this way we have a system of um, equations and then we can solve those so I've decided to solve it by taking equation 1 and adding it to equation 3 we have this and then we take 2 times equation 2 and then we add equation 3 to it forget about these writings here I'll, let me just cancel that out a bit this is supposed to just be 3x really sorry about this this is 3x here all right so we move on with the problem it says that all right so when we do that we have this equation coming out now we can use these two equation four and five and then get the values of y and x and then use these values of y on x and not substitute either in one or two or three and then get the value of z as that so clearly we have the relationship because if we get these values of y x and z and put back in this our original relationship then you would have our period and expression for period like this so that is the expression for period you are required to get i hope that was easy all right guys so let's dive right into the last part of the problem explain whether the correctness of physical equation is a necessary condition for its homogeneity again i gave this problem to counteract the problem of um stereotypes so students are used in the gce so seeing problems rather in this manner explain whether the homogeneity of a physical equation is a sufficient condition for its correctness or perhaps why it is a sufficient why it is not a sufficient condition for its correctness then you go ahead to talk about you know presence of dimensionless constant left out portion of the equation um homogeneity is not test for the sense of application of a particular expression for instance work done is four times distance moving in the direction of the force while moment is rather four times the perpendicular distance from the pivot all the way to the line of action of the force so homogeneity does not test whether that when you, what sense is that displacement you're talking about right and then you also talk about homogeneity is unable to verify you know um to simplify the base unit of exponential logarithmic and you know trigonometric expression so all those limitations you talk about that when the gc asks you that but then this question i'm not asking you 
explain whether the correctness of a physical equation is a necessary condition for its homogeneity. Now, I'm going to solve the problem using logic, right? And I'm going to solve it using logic because back in 2020, there's a question in paper one that was talking about homogeneity. And one of the options was that if a particular equation is homogeneous, then it's homogeneous only. And then another option was saying that it's homogeneous and then possibly correct. Now, um, the right answer there is actually that, that if an equation is homogeneous, then it is possibly correct, not just homogeneous only. Um, I'm going to use logic to solve this and explain why that is the answer because I had some students who came over to me and said their teacher said, uh, if a particular equation is homogeneous, then it's only homogeneous, <laughs> right? So I'm going to use logic to show why it's homogeneous and then possibly correct. Now, suppose we have logical statement P imply Q, implies Q, which reads, if P, then Q, the statements P and Q are respectively the sufficient and necessary condition of the compound statement P implies Q. Now, that's just some, you know, lesson there. So let's just move on to what I'm trying to say. But this lesson is very important, though. Now, let the statement P, a physical equation, is correct and Q, the physical equation, is homogeneous. Now, if a physical equation is correct, then the physical equation is homogeneous already, right? So then, therefore, P implies Q is the correct compound statement. If an equation is correct, then it is homogeneous. Good, because whenever an equation is correct, it is homogeneous. Now, this logical statement implies that while the homogeneity of a physical equation is a necessary condition for its correctness, look at, go back to this lesson here and understand why I'm making this statement. So P implies Q, right? P is a necessary condition, Q is a sufficient condition. So we have this co compound statement P implies Q. If the equation is correct, then it is homogeneous. Therefore, the statement implies that while the homogeneity of the equation is a necessary condition for its correctness, its correctness is therefore a sufficient condition for its homogeneity. That is very important. And if homogeneity is a necessary condition for its correctness, and then a particular correct equation is homogeneous, then since that that condition is a necessary condition for its connect, correctness then it is possibly correct right but if, it, if the equation is already correct since correctness of a particular physical equation is a sufficient condition for its homogeneity then whenever a particular physical equation is correct it is already sufficiently homogeneous right so that's why the option to the question in 2020 paper one the right answer was homogeneous and then possibly correct because homogeneity is a necessary condition and correctness is a sufficient condition so that compound statement p implies q i hope you get it hope you enjoyed our video please like comment subscribe and share it to your friends thank you so much for watching for the love of science we keep bringing you thrilling scientific content <laughs>